channel. Today I'm going to be talking about breastfeeding past to the age of one and as somebody who this is now my second time nursing a toddler, I have been getting so many questions about how exactly that looks, why would I do that, why would I put myself and my child through that, I've been getting so many negative comments, um, interestingly not from people in real life but from people online because that is one of the joys of having a social media presence. So I thought that today would be a really awesome opportunity for me to talk through some of the benefits of breastfeeding past the age of one, but also um, how it looks in like a typical 24 hours. Plus, I'm going to hopefully rope my husband in to come in and just chat about anything that he might have, any, any input that he might have, any issues that he might have with me nursing both in public, nursing past a certain age um, and things that he may or may not be okay with. Um, this is not a conversation that we've had previously so I'm really curious to see what his input is going to be and if you're here just because you've been watching some of my other videos thank you so much and you are welcome um, to the community that we have on here and I'm so excited to be able to share more content with you as it comes. So I suppose the first thing to say is that this is not how I planned my nursing journey going. From the outset, as somebody who had never breastfed before, never had a baby before, I was like, mm, yeah, okay, the evidence says six months, I'm gonna go with six months. And while since that, the evidence has actually changed and the recommendation from the World Health Organization, as well as the Academy of Pediatrics just this year, the American Academy of Pediatrics, is that we breastfeed for two years. Um, and that includes like more past that. But the guidance around the two years is for so many benefits, um, including a reduced risk of chest and ear infections, reduced risk of childhood leukemia, benefits um, in, in, for, for mum, including a reduced risk of you know women women's cancers. It helps us to our uterus to contract, to reduce the likelihood of bleeding. The longer that you breastfeed, the reduced likelihood you have of osteoporosis or osteopenia. There are so many reasons, including um, for personally for me something that I've really noticed as somebody who struggles with their mental health is the protective effect of just simply due to the release of oxytocin and dopamine that you get at that milk release that milk ejection reflex per feed is a, a protective effect on a woman's mental health so this is something that's come up particularly um, in recent years but there's some awesome research done uh, by an uh, somebody who I absolutely adore. Kathleen Kendall Tackett has done some awesome research around this if you're curious to go and have a little bit more of a mooch on that and do a little bit of research yourself. But there are so many reasons. I'm really honestly, uh, you could go and just like Google it or in fact I'll just pull up one of my favourite Instagram posts uh, that talks about the benefits of nursing past one. And really for me, I used to think that like mums are doing it for themselves. I'm here to tell you that it's not for fun. <laughs> um, it's really for me been something that my kids were not ready to stop when they turned one. And it became something that was an extension of my approach to parenting, which is very much gentle, attachment, child-led. And for me, when my kids were telling me that they needed this to help regulate themselves for that connection, for that wind down time, uh, and also, of course, the immunological benefits, which is that you've got that lovely feedback mechanism. So particularly if your baby's starting nursery or kindergarten or any sort of childcare and they're exposed to bugs constantly, for a breastfed infant, what they're telling the mum's body through their saliva is, I'm being exposed to these pathogens, can you please make me something that's going to help protect me? And so your body then naturally pr produces these protective benefits, these immunological benefits to help your baby, baby fight whatever it is they're exposed to so they're less likely to get sick. And I've certainly noticed that in my experience, whereas our friends maybe are getting every cough and cold and chesty flu going going by them our kids have not had that so that's really really nice um but for my children when it came to the fact that they weren't ready 
nursing looked different for us. Certainly for me, what helped me to get to this point is laying down some sort of boundaries in place. I call them nursing manners, uh, which made it possible for me to get to this point, but also made it that our journey was respectful um, of me in particular, but also of other people's bodies. So bodily awareness, um, spatial awareness, asking, looking for literal consent before time to nurse was hugely important to me. Um, before the age that my kids can actually verbalize that want or need, we did a lot of sign language. So for us, this meant milk. Um, and I was able to know exactly what my kid needed and then be able to get into a space where I was comfortable doing that. When it comes to this age, it's you know, there are, you can totally place those boundaries whatever way suits you. So for me, I don't really nurse my older child in public. That's something that we do at home simply because that's what feels good to me. And I'm, as, as at the other part of that nursing party, <laughs> I get to create those rules. And as a lactation consultant, I like to put the power back in those families' hands. I like to be able to give you the choice to create something that feels good to you so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. So for us, that's how it looks. And um, it's, you know, creating structure around that that feels good to us. Um, in general, a typical day of a tandem nursing mama of two little ones looks like wake up in the morning we pretty much get up and get on with our day whereas a lot of families would have time in bed and have a lot more to have time for snuggles and breastfeed together and uh, we get up we have breakfast we come downstairs and our day is pretty busy until archer has his first nap so somewhere around half nine ten i will nurse him to sleep which is another awesome skill that I like to call my magic trick because it's like I'm waving a magic wand and other than that I would have to be like rocking him or putting him in the buggy or putting him into the car or doing some form of sleep training which we don't personally do so for me this is an awesome way for me to also be able to rest and if I'm not working at that time I will generally just lay in bed and rest with him then the next time for nursing is around 12 o'clock where he'll go for his second nap and often I will off, I will nurse Atticus to sleep as well. So we'll all snuggle in bed together. I get an opportunity to catch up on my emails and get some social media work done. And we're all together to get that nice bonding and connecting time. And then really after that, if Archie's not gonna take like a three o'clock nap, it's only if there's someone hurts themselves, uh, we fall and have a big bang, or someone's just really overwhelmed with something, it can be a great like fast track way to just sit down, get time together to reconnect, to catch your breath, to reset before we move forward. So if there's been something um, around sort of a disciplinary type action, this is a lovely way for us to have time in as opposed to time out. And of course you can do this without you having a nursing baby, but this is what we particularly do. Uh, if you're interested and curious about how we approach gentle parenting and the way that we approach um, tantrums and big emotions like that, do check out that other um, video that I'll try and link at the bottom of this video here. But for me, this was not something that I planned on doing. I very much took it as like every feed, every day, and all of a sudden, I'm nursing a preschooler. And there is no sign of stopping. It's something that I bounce between being so excited and so proud of, and oh my gosh, but what if the world sees? So I think that as somebody who now has a, a reasonable presence on social media, I'm excited to say that I'm proud of myself and that if you are in this position, you should be too. And that there are so many benefits to nursing your baby past the age of one and that you shouldn't feel in any way shamed or negative about what you are doing for your child. And the benefits of this moving forward are just ginormous. And if no one else is proud of you, I am proud of you. Okay, so I'm gonna try and rope my lovely husband in to join us for the second portion of this video. No, no, you sit on Sunday. Yeah, sit in the pillow. Sit in the pillow, babe. Come on. Do you want me nice and close? Lay now. Cozy buttons. Okay. So, oh, for those of you who haven't met my lovely husband before, this is Pete. He hasn't been on the video in a long time. So, totally unscripted. What do you think of me breastfeeding? Um, babies. 
Short answer, maybe. Short answer, right? That would tell you. Sarah likes to waffle. waffle. Um, maybe we should have prepped. <laughs> I, Do you think it's a good thing? I think it's a good thing for the children. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a good thing for the children. Um, I think it's a good thing for all children. And, yeah, obviously, like um, health benefits. Health benefits and such. Um, are we talking outside, like when we're in public? Is that what you mean by... Yeah, we can totally dive into that. So, like, you think that it's like, how do you feel about me breastfeeding Atticus in public, who is three and a half? Um, I don't think anything of it. Cool. I was very nervous there for a second (laughs) because you had a long pause. Okay, so you're like, whatever. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of a worry thing because. When you're younger, I suppose when you start going through puberty and you're like in your twenties, boobs are like a, a sexy thing, and not that they're sexy, um, anymore. Um, just once know. you see someone breastfeeding, it, it just it, you don't. It becomes yeah, it becomes. It, it just becomes this natural thing. It's like breathing. Like it's just. Do you think it becomes a natural thing, or it's something that you didn't realize is a natural thing before, and now you've got. A breastfeeding partner so you're like they're no longer sexual or is uh, it something that like no I guess, if someone's I, breastfeeding it's not sexual suppose, at all uh, when i was younger i suppose uh, i suppose even at the start i'd be like oh you know i felt a little bit awkward but i knew how good it was for you and for them um but there was a point is this kind of really gray area so there's a point where i was kind of you know when you started breastfeeding and and then there was this I kind of felt a little bit of like oh you know a little bit apprehensive but that went really really quickly and then it was like more so um, it was this kind of weird grey point where at what age do you think that was where all of a sudden it like became with, with less Atticus. odd yeah um, do you feel like that was like a qu- in quick succession it became something that was um, just in quick succession it, it went pretty quick and then <laughs> in quick succession it went pretty quick so yeah. like do you feel like Sorry, yeah, really when, bad grammar there. Sorry, bad grammar. Um, <laughs> you need to apologize. So when I was when he was like a month old, you were like, oh yeah, like boobs are for feeding babies, of course. Or no, did it take a while? No, um, I'd say it'd be a bit like, look, I wasn't taking notes on it. I should have. No, apparently so. Um, I think, yeah, it went. I don't know. I can't remember okay. where it went. Okay, okay. But it went. But like, say for a friend of mine now. If you were to, like, I've got lots of friends who are nursing their babies. Do you go, oh my gosh, there's a boob out? Like, Ugh. or do you not even, literally not even notice and just, are you able to, like, maintain eye contact? Are you able to continue a conversation if they've got to, like, feed their babies? Or is it something that you have to do, like, a double take for? No. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, they all breastfeed. Um, no, you don't do a double take. You, you just talk to them. They just, it's it's kind of like, I suppose someone who bottle feeds, that's kind of what it'd be like. It'd be weird kind of doing a double take with someone with a bottle because like they're just feeding a child. Yeah. And but like it's not like it's not like romantic where we would be romantic and then it's a boob for romantic. This is reasons. something that I find so interesting. Um because you said that explain this to me before that it's like almost like a switch in your head yeah. that goes from like, okay, there's no baby here we're being intimate together yeah oh boobs great yeah it's like you almost don't even realize they exist until we're having sex yeah it's, it's kind of yeah it's weird because you don't you're like, got like a mental your switch. friends are friends and then when they're feeding they're they're just they're feeding their baby they're feeding your baby yeah. and you're just chatting to them straight directly to them. so it's not like you know, whereas it when it comes lit. to like your partner and being yeah. intimate time you view them completely differently yeah it's it's that's really interesting because it's not like you know it's like you're like a kid going near you gone through puberty and then you just see well of a woolen boob here and like you're looking at <laughs> that was building reels um so you know it all it, of a sudden changes the view it, on it yeah it that's changed. really interesting that you said that because i did a really awesome live with a physio and one of the things she was talking about talking about so like when you have like a milk spray this is the first time you ever heard this you have like the same 
a hormonal release or a similar hormonal release to when you orgasm so a lot of women will actually like like this hasn't happened to me personally so it's not what we haven't had to have this conversation but for a lot of women that's really normal for them to have like milk spray as they orgasm so really yeah really really interesting and like a lot of for a lot of women that's super uncomfortable for them they're not able to see that that's just part of a normal healthy process and that that's something that you could just have a giggle about well, I think uh, that would be we, hilarious we, I feel we, like we laugh over a lot had, of silly things yeah, we've had um, well, I won't say you've had very... milk in your eye before I feel yeah, like yeah we've had we've um, I, I don't like to use the word <laughs> there's, a, there's a word I use and Kitty doesn't like me using it it's very scientific and stuff mid coitus <laughs> um, we, we've had a little bit of a I won't say spray but yeah and like that hasn't bothered me at all I think um, it would take a lot to bother a guy who's like in the middle of the deed. Yeah. I feel like we have to be careful because uh, uh, this could get banned from really YouTube. Bad. Um, I think for a guy mid coitus, um, I think I think you'd need to have an aeroplane crashing beside them with their grandmother or something screaming at them. Something really, really over the something top nice and before it'll actually take us off our focus. Yeah, we've um, gone off on a tangent already. Sorry, tangent. So for you, breastfeeding has become something that is completely like a separate entity. Feeding your babies is something that you've... Like, did you ever expect me to feed our babies for this long? No. Or what was your like, view I, on it? Did you have any opinion whatsoever? No, I, I didn't... I did, like, I think maybe, like maybe I did at the start. I can't really remember. I'm trying to think. Like I probably, or, as a lactation consultant, had like was telling you that I'm going to breastfeed. <laughs> well, no, that's fine, but I, I, I don't know whether I don't think you would have said it, but I, I suppose it's kind of like when you're looking at someone bottle feeding, and then it's more so like there's like a start and a finish, and then it's like a mush. Because air kids never at mush. Oh, and you then, mean like, you mean the stage baby puree? Oh, sorry, yeah, so, okay, yeah, yeah like, sorry, okay. mush. And um, so it's like you've got your bottle feeding, and then you've got your I'll call it mush. You've got your mush, and then you've got your <laughs> ex- heavily boiled carrots and whatever turnip, yeah. and then you move on to maybe a little bit of solid, like like scrambled egg or something, and then slowly you have all these it's stages, like yeah. And so you just expected that breastfeeding would slot in as one of those increments, no, and that well, it would no, be phased I, out, or well, I suppose maybe did you have like an expectation in terms of how long it would go on for? No, well, I thought. At the start, I thought it was that sort of weaning, because obviously there's weaning in it as well, in it, in the whole process. Um, I thought it was like this, like same thing stages, but I think part of it was in, a misunderstanding of kind of how natural it is. So because all you hadn't of these, been exposed to it because you'd never seen someone breastfeed no, before. No, and um, it, which is really, really kind of interesting because like one of my lectures the other day it was the same thing it's just this exposure that you people miss and it was kind of funny talking to this person I've only met once or twice about breastfeeding as a woman kind of <laughs> woman lecturer and like I, I big up my wife quite a lot proud hubby yeah very proud and yeah it was kind of it, it's weird because it's it's this exposure that most people don't get and don't understand and how natural it is problem. and obviously now it's because I'm, albeit I'm not part of it, because you know I don't have boobs. But men can lactate. Separate conversation. Yeah. He not, refused to even try. <laughs> not going to happen. So um, pushing it, I think. Yeah, pushing it a bit. Just wants extra time off. That's all. To go skiing or I don't know, <laughs> have sailing, skiing. maybe. <laughs> or um, sailing. That's all. That's the only but reason. I was fun. asked, could I lactate so Kitty could go off and have sail? There's a really awesome bit of research where a, a man takes supreme um, amounts of domperidone, which is a known galactagogue, and then pumps at like set hours during the day to create the stimulation as if he was feeding a baby. And he did go on to actually produce milk. But obviously not enough to like. Um, yeah, I, I don't have enough. Baby. The baby would starve um, if I tried it. So uh, and I have a very hairy chest. So that's um, another issue. It, an edge and trimmer, Black and Decker would need to cut through all of this. Hence me hiding it. But going back to my off my tangent, um, I didn't. I suppose. Pre, understanding 
it was these stages um, which we've been told these are the stages and it's like it's it seems to me very company driven like bottle is you know is a product and then mush your baby mush is a product and then like you've got stages so it, it just seems very company driven so we've gotten now this kind of naturalistic yeah, look I was of it. Thinking about what used to happen in caveman days. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't or, puree pumpkin. No, we didn't. We didn't. And even if you look, it's kind of funny. It's a, you might see kind of some tribal videos or something on Natural Geographic, and there's none of that. We don't have that same kind of like. Here's your bottle. Here's your classic bottle, and then here's your farm meal. And you have to boil the water. You have to be careful that this isn't like an anti-formula. So I'm not being anti-formula. No, I'm just... It's, uh, fed what, is best, people. Yeah, fed, just feed a baby. Um, <laughs> whatever, like, whatever you can. Um, obviously not dry wall or, or like this. Don't feed your baby wall. Yeah, but yes, definitely feed a baby. But I think no matter what direction you think, take, uh, how I viewed it, especially with breastfeeding, was I didn't understand it. Um, and feeding understanding would help other partners yeah i think understanding would help other partners and do you I, I th think what would be like your top three tips for a partner supporting their breastfeeding the breastfeeding um, person honestly look men are men we're going to look at boobs if a woman has a boob out like you like as in i view my wife's boobs in two different kind of places one for feeding the baby and then one for when we're intimate and then that's it her friends uh, you know there's no kind of connection there so i just see them as feeding mechanisms it's kind of really kind of weird <laughs> I'm sorry you're going sorry with that. Sorry. Um, sorry friends <laughs> but like i think a big hang up guys will have is kitty will breastfeed and you might get the odd guy you'll you'll dance because we're only human you might see a guy kind of going checking out you're married she's your partner it's a boob we still have that little inkling of our you know teenage boy still in us so you'll see men looking but if you're man enough and if you're adult enough and you're mature enough you'll go look you know score one for me because you know they're checking my wife out that sounds really weird but the way i look at it it's just a boob it's a boob it's for feeding and that's what they're actually their that's exactly purposes. what the purpose is but look okay. the guy's gonna walk and on and what about like i mean like supporting someone like getting started with breastfeeding like the early days so when i was up like 10 million times a night how did you support me what was like what's a way that you felt like you were giving me what i needed to be able to nourish and grow our children food that's feed it. the wife <laughs> feed the wife i was hoping you were gonna get that right yeah. it was like you fed me Wh whatever literal chop up the food and feed the wife yeah no um, basically and it's kind of it's fun. Water. like yeah. food food like yeah food and water you know what you, you really can't, simple it's, it, yeah it's kind of like you kind of like going to a stable and just feeding your old horse and all that oh, i don't know, <laughs> I didn't know where this video was gonna go so it's that but also like I think for, I remember with Atticus, you would like wake every time I would feed. Yeah, it's kind to of to like, like see, does he? I need support, or like just like you, just to be yeah, not on that, my that's own. That's another weird thing. And I think the second time around, that that wasn't necessary because I was like, oh wait, go back to sleep. It makes much more sense for you to do that. Yeah. But it can feel very alone when you're just figuring it out and you're trying to literally learn a new skill, you and your baby, in the wee hours of the morning. So that was something that was really huge to me, and I remember you like waking and just like being with us. Yeah. and then like offering to like win the baby or you know change yeah. his nappy or whatever it, 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 and it, it, that it, was that was huge so yeah, like, it's kind of like a flow it's kind of like um because it, obviously it's different now yeah and it's it, i think in the early days for someone who's new and who's supporting their partner it's you're on this very high alert like you're on more of alert because being the mum but you're on this high alert also and eventually you kind of over time you realize like depending on the situation on the situation we're in it became less and less and less about me 
as like trying to get up and trying to support you and it was far because easier because I became more confident because you became yeah. more confident but possibly yeah. that was due to the support and I think if you are new to breastfeeding make sure and check out the, the video that I have relating to getting breastfeeding off to the best start because that would be a really great point for you to prepare yourself um, and what would be your biggest tip in terms of making it easy I mean I guess making it easier but like how easier for whom yeah making it easier in general I guess for, for whom me you for partner you yeah for, well for, for us as, as partnership like what would be no do you know what let's switch the question because you kind of already answered that feed the feed the mum is pretty much the key and be present and support them just be I present think, yeah one of the big things that I get as a lactation consultant is questions around like, okay, well, if you're not the nursing parent, how do you connect with your baby? I love this question because I feel like it opens it up hugely. But like, how would you say your relationship is with your boys now as the non-lactating parent? Do you feel like that impinged or like got in the way of you having a close connection with them? Um, No, I like my connection with boys is, as I see really strong um i think part of it is part like because you breastfeed mm-hmm. and, and they like this closeness it, it makes it easier they they connect having that closeness to you even with me so i, I don't I, I don't actually see any kind of mm-hmm. difference i so I they like to be close to you just in the same way as and they, they like, like to be close, to, be close to, to me in the same way um which is lovely because you know, I don't know whether that's got necessarily anything to do with breastfeeding though. It probably doesn't. I don't know, but I suppose the way that I the advice that I would give if you're curious would be there are so many other ways to connect with someone okay. other than just with food. Yeah. So like I always say that dads or partners, the non nursing parent is in charge of like arts and entertainment. So you're talking like bathing the baby, like baby massage, okay. baby wearing um, yeah. I, I like the baby singing, wearing as well. That's, reading, yeah, yeah, baby wearing is like something that it's, you absolutely love to do. Like, I, I you love really look that. forward re- yeah, to do. doing that yeah, again. Yeah, it's really nice to do. Um, that because, closeness. I, and yeah, and even even when I really like when there's no, it's, it's kind of weird. I like when they're sleepy for two reasons because you get to keep them close to you, which is really really nice because you got that bonding. And then two, they're just quiet. So you know, you can do your own thing. <laughs> Added bonus. But yeah, <laughs> so, you can read your book. Yeah, um, um, exactly. Okay. Well, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of follow-up questions and uh, for anyone who is curious as to like what it's been like as a, the partner of a breastfeeding mother, go ahead and answer ask those questions down below. But also, if you are looking to prepare yourself, make sure and book yourself in for an antenatal breastfeeding course or class. Uh, go ahead and check out my website and check out the events section for the next live upcoming courses that I have. And thank you so much to my lovely husband for joining me. Uh, this is the first video that he's actually done on here. And if you've enjoyed his presence and enjoyed his input, make sure and let me know so that he can come and join us again for the next mm-hmm. video. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.